Hi guys, it's me, it's your boy bro, and I am your bro man. Lunar Lens is where light meets speed. They are the photographers that take these awesome pictures of my cars and motorcycles. Go check them out. I've put their Facebook and Instagram links in the description below. I have a C7, which is the seventh generation Corvette. The Corvette is also called the VET, and it's a true American icon. It is hailed as America's sports car. It is built and sold by Chevy. It has been in continuous production since 1953. And over the years, there have been eight generations of Corvettes. Each generation has been a little different than the previous one, but there's been one thing that all of them have in common. They're all two-seaters, rear-wheel drive, and a whole lot of fun. have a c6 corvette back in the day but i sold it when i decided to go to grad school i was heartbroken but i promised myself that someday i'm gonna get get it back and i got this one the day after i graduated so this is a special car to me so the corvette has a clamshell hood which means it opens up the other way i love how beautiful the engine bay looks i love the little corvette lettering in red over the engine it looks pretty it looks really pretty so starting off with the interior it's got the nice stingray panel on the door sill it has nice and comfortable bucket seats although this car looks small it's quite spacious it has about 43 inches of legroom and 38 inches of headroom so the interior on the c7 is vastly improved from what we had on the c6 this looks much more refined than what it used to be you have a big infotainment screen you can choose from five driving modes on the magnetic ride selector i have my seven speed stick shift and these are the competition seats So I have the Z51 and the carbon fiber package for this Corvette. Now let's take it on the road and see how she drives. Let's go. So the first thing you realize is how low to the ground you're sitting. It's in stark contrast to the F-150 where you're sitting high above the ground over everybody else. But here you're sitting low to the ground, like super low. But even though it's low to the ground, it's really, really comfortable. Uh, especially if you're in the eco or touring mode, it is super comfortable. I've done a few road trips on this. It feels really good. Uh, and in the eco mode, it has the cylinder deactivation technology, so it shuts down half, half the bank. So I've gotten upwards of 30 miles to a gallon. It's really easy to push the clutch in. The, the manual transmission is amazing it just shifts into gears uh, without much hassle at all this is a beautiful car it's a looker you'll get looks you'll get looks wherever you go beauty is this car is amazing if you want to just cruise around town cruise on the highway you want to go carve up some canyons or take it to the track it's comfortable doing whatever you want it to the infotainment screen is pretty big it's large and what they did with the c7 was 
they designed everything towards the driver uh, so this is all of this stuff is facing the driver that makes it really easy to access any of it you're just one finger length away the one thing I don't like and I'll be honest like if you're this has happened to me a few times or if you're resting your arm on the center console you will hit the traction control button uh, you will hit the traction control button and I've turned the traction control off a couple of times by mistake not that I wanted wanted to turn it off but you place your hand there and it boom it, this is the this is the part where I would tell you guys like let's pull over and look at some of the mods but this car is bone stock I have not done any mods to it whatsoever it, it comes with the factory NPP valve exhaust so it's got the butterfly valves that open up at certain revs or stay closed at certain revs um, but once you put it in track mode they stay open all the time so it sounds really awesome when you do that and so yeah I have had I have had no reason to play with anything or change anything but there are no mods but how about the cost of ownership yo what's popping I'm back and I am gonna do the rest of the video the punk is in this post <laughs> so on the cost of ownership front I had to do a scheduled maintenance at 7,500 miles that cost about 250 a scheduled maintenance at 15,000 miles that cost about 220 a couple of oil changes about 120 each so that's 240 I had to change one set of tires so all four tires that was about 1600 and I got the transmission flushed for about 500 that brings us to a total of 2820 I've had it for about 23 months now, so divide it by the number of days, it's about $4 a day. Let's go back and let's show you some cool stuff about the car that the punk hasn't shown you guys. See those little dots up there that's the shift light the punk has probably been talking about ride comfort fuel economy seating height and all that boring stuff this car is not meant to be driven like that it's meant to be in track mode and go <laughs> so a couple of things happen when you put it in track mode you get that funky screen the suspension stiffens the steering and throttle response quicken but the main fun is when you floor the pedal. <laughs> So be careful when you're driving. Like, can you use this car as a daily driver? I used this car as a daily driver for about eight months or so before I got the truck. It's got plenty of trunk space for your grocery runs or and other things. But but yeah, it can be done. Should it be done? Probably not. But can it be done? Absolutely. But this is a car you want to have just. Stupid.
stupid fun with and you get a lot of performance this does 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds and this is the base stingray the higher up you go if you get a z06 or zr1 they have crazy they are even crazier the price point for this is simply awesome like you can find these c7s on the used car markets uh, for around fifty thousand dollars and you get a lot of performance for, for that kind of money a lot of people say like yeah but the interior is not the best blah 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 sure it's not the interior of a lamborghini or a ferrari or a bentley or whatever but you're not paying as much as those anyways and yet you get a lot of performance time for the score right uh so on the looks it's a 10 out of 10 on the brap it's a 10 out of 10 on the usability uh it's neither here nor there it's a great weekend car it's got enough space for your grocery runs and stuff like that but if you have a family or if you're if you've got more than two people that you're traveling around with not the best so i'll give it a six out of ten and on the maintenance it's the highest of the four toys that i have however it's not as high as the c6 that i had so i'll give it a six out of ten and that gives us a combined bromance score of 8 out of 10. So the Corvette, it's a true American icon. It's beautiful, it's fast, it's a lot of fun to drive. A little high on the maintenance. Uh, the more you drive it, of course, the more <laughs> maintenance you'd have to do. I'd have it, I've had it for about 23 months and I've driven it for about 17,000 miles. It'll always, always, always put a smile on your face. There is some sad news. The C7 is the last Corvette with a stick shift. The C8s are all automatic, so if you want a stick shift, get a C7. Thanks for watching. Bro out.